problem number one. On a certain workday, the rate in tons per hour at which unprocessed gravel arrives at a gravel processing plant is modeled by G of t equals 90 plus 45 cosine t squared over 18, where t is measured in hours and t is between 0 and 8. At the beginning of the workday, t equals 0, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. During the hours of operation between 0 and 8, time 0 and 8, the plant processes gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons per hour. So before even actually digging into the problem, let's just make sure we know what's going on with this problem. We have a gravel processing plant that has some unprocessed gravel in the plant, and then more unprocessed gravel is going to continue to arrive throughout the day. However, um, they are also the plant is also processing gravel at a certain rate, which is 100 tons per hour. So we have a couple things going on in this problem. All right, part A, find G prime of 5. Using correct units, interpret your answer in the context of the problem. So there's two things. There's this one, and there's interpret my answer. All right, first of all, G of T, it says, is modeled in tons per hour. So just keep that in mind. That's G. All right, if it asks us to find G prime of 5, we are actually going to use math 8 for this one because we should never have to take the derivative or integral by hand if we're using our calculator. This is a calculator problem. So we're simply just going to go to math 8. This will be the function that we're typing in. We do want to make sure that we are in radians for this problem. And when you type in the answer, you should get g prime of 5 is equal to negative 24.588. All right, and on the second part, so that was part one, using correct units, interpret your answer in the context of the problem, okay? Well, first of all, thinking of correct units, if I was already in tons per hour and I took the derivative, that's going to add another per hour. So this is going to be measured in tons per hour squared. And so since we're talking about we took the derivative, the derivative is the rate, so this is going to be the rate and we're having um, gravel arriving so we're going to say the rate at which gravel is arriving which gravel is arriving okay what's happening to the rate since this is a negative number it's going to be decreasing by how much it's going to decrease 24.588 tons per hour squared and when is that happening it's happening at t equals five hours okay so we do want to make sure that we include all of that information it's telling our rate is decreasing by this much at t equals five hours so this would be worth two points we'd get one point for getting the negative 24.588 and then we'd get one point for explaining right part b Find the total amount of unprocessed gravel that arrives at the plant during the hours of operation on this workday. So if I want the total amount of unprocessed gravel, I want to know how many tons. And if I'm right here, G is tons per hour. To get to tons, I know I'm going to take the integral. So we're going to be going from 0 to 8, and we're just arriving. So we're just going to G is the how much gravel is arriving. So we're going to do it of G of T dt and if you would like to it's totally up to you um, whether you actually put g of t in here or you actually put the um, actual equation in there but please remember to make sure you put your dt and then we'll let our calculator do the work on this one so we're going to let math 9 do all the work for us and if we do that we'll get 825.551 tons all right we will get one point for having the integral set up and then we would get one point for the proper answer so that again is worth two points all right, part C. Is the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant increasing or decreasing at time t equals 5? Show the work that leads to your answer. All right, so we, so we need to figure out um, how much is in the plant. Um, is that amount that's unprocessed increasing or decreasing at time equals 5? What we need to do on this one, G, is how fast the unprocessed gravel is getting to the plant. And we also know that... Um, the plant is processing gravel at 100 tons per hour, so we need to pretty much figure out is the rate at which the gravel is arriving, is that bigger than or less than how much how fast they're able to process it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find G of 5, and I'm going to compare it to 100 to see which one gives me a bigger answer. Okay, when you find G of 5, just plug G of 5, plug 5 into the G formula. When you do that, you're going to get 98.14 one and when I compare that to 100 it's less than 100 which means they are
processing it faster than it's arriving. So is the amount of unprocessed gravel increasing or decreasing? It is decreasing, and that is because, so I'm going to say the amount of unprocessed gravel is decreasing, and that is because um, I could say that G of 5 is less than 100, which means the plant is processing the gravel faster than the gravel is arriving. So that should give us some points. And I'd also say, I probably should say at time t equals five. You don't wanna forget that. So um, this part would be worth two points. I have to compare g of five to 100. So if I've made this comparison somewhere, that would be worth a point. And then if I'm able to come up with my conclusion, you might have your conclusion a little bit different than mine and worded a little bit different, that's fine. Um, that would be my second point. So this is once again worth two points. All right, part D. What is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant during the hours of operation on this workday? Okay, as soon as they mention the word maximum and I'm given an interval, I know that this is actually an absolute maximum. Okay, and if you recall when we have an absolute maximum, we are going to find, uh, we'll have an equation and we'll take the derivative of it, we'll find a critical number and then we'll evaluate the um, actual function at the critical numbers and at the endpoints. So what is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel? So we need a formula for the amount of unprocessed gravel. So we have A equals the amount. So first of all, we start with 500. So I'm going to start with 500, okay, plus we have some unprocessed gravel arriving. So I'm going to go from zero to some time t. We don't know how long it's going to be in somewhere between 0 and 8, but not necessarily all the way to 8, so I'm going to put a t there. And then I'm going to actually put um, the to figure out how much gravel, again, we're dealing with g. So I'm going to put g of x dx, and I'm going to explain that in just a minute. And then I'm not going to put the dx yet. And then we're going to subtract. So this is how much is arriving, but we also have to subtract out how much they're processing, which is 100. So that's going to be my equation for the amount of gravel that I'm going to be processing, all right? Or that's going to be unprocessed. One thing that I'm going to point out from this equation is when I put zero to t, it looks like just from looking at all of the papers where there have been corrections made, they always like, and I would hate to lose points if we didn't do this, so I'm just suggesting that we just always do this. If I'm going from zero to t, they always use a different variable in the integral. So we are going to stick with that as well. So if I use a t up here, I'm going to use a different variable in my integral. So please just do that. All right, so now that I have a formula for the amount, I need to find the derivative. So let's just do that. And if I take the derivative of 500, that's just zero. And then we know that the derivative of an integral is just what's there. So it's just gonna be g of x minus 100, but I do get to plug in that um, t for the x now. So we're gonna have g of t minus 100. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is um, find a critical number. So we'll find g of t minus 100. We'll set that derivative equal to zero. And from here, what you can do, we know what g of t is equal to. So we're going to, um, we'll have 90 plus 45 cosine t squared over 18 minus 100 equals zero. Okay, to figure this out, since we get to use our calculator, we're going to graph it. And then we're going to be looking at the zero feature of our calculator. And when you do that, you're going to get t equals 4.923. You might want to, if you did not do that, go ahead and plug it in your calculator and, and make sure you get t equals 4.923. Okay, so now we need to find the amount at the critical number. And then we also need to find the amount at the endpoints. Okay, so to find the amount at 4.923, we're going into the amount formula. So we're going to have 500 plus the integral from 0 to 4.923 of g of x minus 100 dx. So we can use g of x, which is right up here. We'll just put an x in instead of a t, no biggie. 
<clears throat> and then evaluate that. And when you evaluate that, you should get 635.376. Okay, the second one at time equals zero, we just have 500 plus the integral from zero to zero, which obviously is nothing, so this will be 500. And then at eight, we'll have 500 plus the integral from zero to eight of g of x minus 100 dx. And if we figure that out, we should get 525.551. <clears throat> and then it says, what is the maximum amount? The biggest number that we got was this one right here. So the maximum amount was 635.376. And if we're talking about amount, that would be tons. All right, so this um, answer, that's the right answer, but let's just figure out points. If I set the derivative, if I have this right here, whoops, if I have this right here equal to zero, somewhere in my paper I have something that looks like that, I'm going to get a point just for putting that. Number, the second one, if I did come up with 635.376 tons, I'm going to get a point. And then if I was able to justify, this would be justification right here. So that would also be worth a point. So this part was worth three points.